coming off from the hump is what I <laughs> On that high note, we'll get around that prenuptial. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call the public meeting to order. This is a public hearing. Uh, we have two items on our agenda. I'd like to acknowledge that the first and public are notified. I'm glad to see we have some interested parties with us. I'm going to uh, deal with both of them at the same time. We'll have Douglas walk us through 2011-1 and 2011-2, if you'd be so kind. Thank you, Mayor. As you all re will recall, you saw both of these ordinances uh, last month at the public hearing, um, and they both, <coughs> one was re uh, referred back to the Planning Commission, and the other one was uh, deferred at the request of staff to allow additional work. Uh, and they're both back to, to you this month for second reading. Uh, the first is 2011-1, and this is the ordinance dealing with sandwich board signs. Uh, and if you'll remember at the last um, meeting, a handful of uh, questions and concerns came up about this ordinance. Uh, one of the primary uh, questions was dealing with uh, the likelihood of a, of a business being able to put a series of signs close to the road um, and basically go from being a, a sign intended for uh, pedestrian traffic and, and turning into a sign more geared towards vehicular traffic. The Planning Commission uh, looked at that issue and they have recommended uh, that the ordinance be amended um, and I think you have this language in your packets but they've recommended adding uh, the language that would require that the sign be no farther than 15 feet from the front door of a business. So this would, those businesses that are set well back from the road uh, would not be allowed to have signs right up at the road. It would need to be close to their front door. The rest of that ordinance remains as it was uh, last month. <clears throat> the next ordinance, 2011-2, is the ordinance that deals with cellular towers. Um, and I will uh, just touch on really the staff um, amendments to this ordinance. And there are a handful, but I'll, I'll really uh, just go into detail on the, on the primary ones. Um, the ordinance has been modified to only apply to existing freestanding towers. So this couldn't, a new tower could not be built in say a new place uh, on the island under this provision. That's one notable change. The, the list of allowable agencies that could build such a tower has been narrowed to only the city. Uh, initially it had the federal government, the state government, the county government, and that's kind of been whittled down to now uh, the ordinance is specific to the city. The zoning districts in which uh, this, this ordinance would allow a tower has been uh, narrowed down to GC1 only, which is a general commercial district. Uh, and then I would, I would uh, direct your attention uh, to subsection 11C, which is probably the main uh, change in this section that's been recommended by staff. And this change would require that any new tower that would, that would be applied for under this amendment, uh, that the, that the um, design and the location be specifically reviewed and approved by the by the city council. So no tower could be built uh, in, unless that's, that tower's design and location has been reviewed and approved by city council. Um, and those are the those are the changes to those two ordinances. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I'll open the floor for any citizens or anybody who would like to make any comments on either of these uh, in any order you wish. Hmm. Hmm. Well done, Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing none, hearing none, time has passed. I'll just call the public hearing to close. And thank you all for coming, and we'll convene the council <laughs> meeting at 7 o'clock, which is in eight minutes. Thank you. I, I didn't know hear you, hear you. There quite well. uh, yeah, they doubled. <laughs> Thank you for coming, one and all. I'd like to call the City Council meeting today, April 26th, to order, 7 p.m. by edict. Uh, we'll start. If you'd please rise, we'll have an invocation and pledge of allegiance. Let us plow, plow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for this wonderful season we now enjoy. We are mindful that your hands have touched our beautiful island and we are the stewards of your care. May spring bring the citizens of this island closer to you in everything we do. Please keep safe those that are in our public service. We cherish them all, whether they are serving this nation, this state, or this city. And we ask, especially tonight, that you look after Norma Jean Page as she deals with the loss of her father. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Marie, can you please call the roll? Michelle. Council Member Bergworth. Here. Council Member Vitelli. Here. Council Member Cannon. Right here. Council Member Duffy. Here. Council Member Loftus. Yo. Council Member Keeney. Here. Council Member Stone. Present. Council Member Thomas. Here. Mayor Cronin. Present. Administrator Tucker. Here. And Attorney Halverson, here. All right, next item on the agenda, I have the pleasure to appoint uh, an officer to our uh, roles in the police department. We have a motion to appoint Chris Quinn as City patrol, and patrol, patrol officer. I so move, Mr. Mayor. Second. Yes. Motion and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's always the tough part of the day. <laughs> Chris, can you step up front here and uh, <clears throat> I'll read a note and you can recite after me. and. <laughs> And you can go back on duty. <laughs> 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 Left on the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Please repeat after me. I, Christopher Quinn. I, Christopher Quinn. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. According to the ordinances of the City of Isle of According to the ordinances of the City of Isle of To perform the duties of the position. To perform the duties of the position. To which I have been selected. To which I have been selected. That I will, that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof, to discharge the duties thereof. So help me God. So help me God. He was our beach service officers last year, and is a native of the area. And you live in Mount Pleasant now? Yes, sir. You're right close. Thank you very much. Welcome. Moving right along, since we have a lot to get through tonight, I'd like to have a motion to approve the journal of the previous meetings, public hearing March 22nd, and regular meeting of March 22nd. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Motion seconded. Any changes, corrections, additions, deletions, whatever? None heard. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item on our agenda, I'd like to bring everybody's attention to the fact that uh, on Sullivan's Island, there's going to be uh, a memorial, a, 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 a tribute to, oh, Linda's <laughs> even got it in, uh, in color. It's going to be called Thompson Park. It's a tribute to the American Revolution, the battle site at Breach Inlet. It's going to be referred to as Battle of Sullivan's Island. There's going to be a public forum this Thursday and it's going to be at the, uh, let me look here, I thought I had it noted. Oh, Sunrise Presbyterian at 5 p.m. Um, after a brief presentation and a brief uh, look at the sketches of what's going to be the uh, memorial, uh, there'll be a walk across the street to see the actual sighting of where it's going to be positioned. Um, there's been a lot of research done on this over the last couple of years by some very concerned uh, and interested parties. and. Uh, it should be quite a tribute to those uh, Americans who, in 1776, way back then, some of us might even remember that, uh, <laughs> you know, helped protect the, uh, the city of Charleston and, and uh, our freedom therefore. So uh, I encourage everybody who's available on Thursday to please, uh, please come forward and attend. Um, it's, it's an important event. And we're going to then, uh, they're going to have the marker established uh, permanently on June 18th. So if you can't make it this uh, this Thursday, you can make it on June 18th. Mark your calendars accordingly. And uh, we have some flyers up here. We'll pass them out if, uh, if anybody has the opportunity to take advantage of it. With that, uh, I would like to ask for a motion to 
to reorder the agenda to move the second reading of Ordinance 2011-2. So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 All right, now we're under consideration of Ordinance 2011-2. Uh, we had an original draft, uh, original motion that you have in your copy. Uh, it has been amended as Douglas reviewed during the public hearing. I'd like to have a motion to uh, amend the ordinance, the proposed ordinance, to conform to the draft that's in our possession as of as of this morning. I guess. So moved. moved. Motion and seconded. Um, any discussion on the changes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, now we have before us the amended version of 2011-2. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion and second. <laughs> and, and, wave the and, and wave the reading. I should have said yes. that. Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, any discussion on this ordinance? I think uh, staff has done a credible job. Uh, it's a very tight ordinance, uh, so to speak. <laughs> um, and I'm certain it'll get us to where we need to be uh, when we're all said and done. So, any other discussion? All right. Thank you. All in favor of the ordinance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Thank you. Um, now that we've gone that far, we need to have a presentation regarding the location and design of the communication tower. We have representatives from Crown Castle here. I think I see County in the back there. <laughs> you guys never sleep, do you? <laughs> work all day, work all night, I know. So if you'd be so kind as to uh, come forward for Marie's benefit, please state your name, and I think we know you're from Crown Castle. Thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan Yates here tonight on behalf of uh, the County of Charleston and Crown Castle International. With me I have Mr. Keith Powell. And in the back of the room, we have the county staff, Bill Tunick, and his folks. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for the passage of the ordinance. And I want to really thank uh, both Douglas, uh, Sterling, the town manager, to get us to this point tonight. And we also thank the chiefs who are with us tonight because this is a, very important to them. The purpose, to, uh, the purpose of the ordinance, as we know, was to allow for the installation of Charleston County. Uh, we're on the existing, there's an existing the um, a communication tower by the Yacht Harbor. What we propose, and part of the ordinance was passed, requires that you, as, as the council, approve the new site plan and the design. What the county is proposing in order to allow their equipment, and what Keith has done, Keith has passed out the drawing, the site plan drawings. I've taken the liberty of taking two of these sheets and just blowing them up so you or the audience could see. Presently on the site as it is today, you have about 3,800 uh, square feet of lease area, and you have a 117-foot uh, cell tower with antennas that go up to about 125 feet. It is presently all used for commercial carriers. You have a shelter here used by Verizon Wireless, another shelter with Sprint Nextel. AT&T is on a platform. T-Mobile is on a platform. Wild Dunes has an existing shelter, and you have a generator. And then you have the pool right here. In order to accommodate the county's equipment and let it do what it's supposed to do to provide the public safety communication, what we're going to do is add about 800 square feet. We're going to add about 800 square feet to the lease area, so it'll be a total lease area of 4,700 square feet. Uh, where you presently had, if you see here, you had the equipment of Altel. Altel has been acquired by Verizon Wireless, so this equipment will be removed and we're simply going to move the, uh, the, the pole position will be moved 40 feet to the north, right to where uh, Altel was. The county will come in in the new lease area, in the new 800 square foot area, and place a 12 by 24 foot equipment shelter for their equipment. Your new ordinance requires that for public safety, you have to be under 200 feet, the total height of the tower. The, this facility, the tower itself is going to be 185 feet, the county is going to deploy on three areas on the tower. <clears throat> Starting at the bottom, at 150 feet, they're going to have a three-foot microwave dish. You go up to 168 feet, 
and they're going to have what we call two whip antennas that are approximately about 14, 15 feet long. And then you go up to 185, and they'll have another 14, uh, three whip antennas at 14 feet to come in right at 199. So, and again, it will be serviced uh, by their, their equipment shelter right there. In order to do this, we will be moving. There's an existing 10-foot sanitary sewer easement. We're going to jog that around so it moves out of the compound. We'll do that in accordance with the requirements of, of the sewer, water and sewer district. So just a little brief overview. Uh, the hope is, and we thank everyone for letting this thing move forward tonight. Obviously, we want to get this done as quickly as, as possible in order to, you know, to get the communication up where it needs to be in, in a timely fashion with hurricane season coming on. So at the end of the day, what you'll have is a tower that's 185 foot tall. It's the same design as before. It's a monopole. It will be on the same piece of uh, leased area, leased from Lowe's Wild Dune Investors, and it's simply going to be moved about 40 feet to the north where existing all tell equipment is. This will help the tower. It'll, all the existing equipment, and particularly the county equipment, we can get it closer to where the county, where it needs to be to the county ground equipment in order to transmit. And again, on the tower itself, you have the existing carriers that go, the commercial carriers go up to about 125 feet. At 150 foot, we'll have the microwave dish that at 168 and 185. First, the two whip antennas positioned at 168, and the three uh, whip antennas positioned at 185. Any, any questions? We, we thank everyone who made this possible to get it all together tonight. Uh, any questions for myself? Mr. Powell did our design on this and did all the legwork. And obviously, Mr. Tunick and the other members of county staff are here to represent the county. So we're here for any and all questions. Okay. I have a few. Uh, first of all, timing on this. Uh, when can this be executed? Um, I guess the best description. We need you on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, timing, timing wise. Um, a lot of things are going to go in place immediately. Um, there's a lot of uh, work we've got to do. I think Mr. Yates kind of outlined uh, moving of sewer lines, existing utilities, uh, uh, things of that nature that do take some, in general terms, prep work to get to the point where we can uh, do the, uh, the installation of the shelter and the tower. So immediately we're starting on a lot of, uh, a lot of hard soft work that, that's going to take place. The tower is probably looking, um, you know, two, three, four months down the road to the point of we've got to transition a lot of existing carriers uh, equipment to the point where we can work in that compound. Mr. Yates mentioned Altel and Verizon. That's, uh, I think everybody's familiar with Altel and Verizon merging. There is some uh, intricacies that, that have to go on there that they're working on to, to get their equipment out of the way. So there's a few logistics-wise to get that. And you have all of the rights and leases, et cetera, necessary? We, we, are, those, we are working those mm -hmm. uh, currently. We do have a uh, conversation. general manager here from Wild well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are conversations going back and forth in there, moving <clears throat> documents back and forth to get to that final form. Uh, the first step was really getting the zoning approved because until okay. we got that done, it was really kind of hard to lay the, the, the hard corners of what we're having to do lease-wise. Okay, and the Water and Sewer Commission is We've, fully up to speed and you've had... I've worked with Mr. Uh, Mr. Jenkins on getting that, uh, so um, obviously the next step is he's the next phone call I've got to make tomorrow for approved tonight. So okay. uh, bring him up to speed on where we are. And can you maintain the existing tower while the new one is constructed, or is there a loss of service during the well, this time? Well, no, sir, there won't be a loss of service. There will be a time frame where both of them will be uh, existing. Um, and. <clears throat> Like I mentioned before, it's kind of transitioning existing equipment over, uh, putting in new equipment, and then, then decommissioning the old portion. So it, uh, the both towers could be up in the air an additional three, four, five, six months, just depending upon weather and, and how the work goes. Okay. Yeah, one of the, obviously we do not want the residents to lose the service they presently right. enjoy. Right. So the, the new tower. We get the call first. <laughs> <laughs> they'll call us a close second, but they'll probably, they know how to, they can go to your house. They don't know where I live is the good thing. So the, the, new, the new monopole will go up and then the transition, you know, we'll have to gear up with the, each carrier will have their slot as they transition their equipment over to the new tower and make their connection to it. Once they're all moved, the old monopole will, it's, it's like a you know, little erector set, the, the monopole is in sections and it will come down. The old one will come down. 
Well, I think anybody who's been out there knows that's, that's a very tight lot, and you're moving a lot of equipment in and out, and so exactly, and, and probably at the busiest time for the use of that property by uh, by the yacht folks as well as the wild dunes folks. Uh, so it'll be complex, but at least. Other questions? Uh, curious. So, what carriers will be covered on this? Cert town? Certainly, Mr. Loftus. Uh, Present, it, the, as we understand it, all the ex existing carriers will remain. And at present on the on the tower, you have Verizon, AT and T, uh, T Mobile, Sprint, Nextel. The only decommissioning would be Alltel, which has been acquired by Verizon. So you'd have tho those four commercial carriers, and then the county would come on. And what it also does, as we discussed, there will be some open space between 125 feet and 150. So say another commercial carrier comes along that wants to provide service to the Isle of Hobbs, there would be space for them also. In addition, um, as required under the ordinance, uh, one other section of the ordinance was there's also space reserved if there's a future need by the, by the city of Isle of Hobbs. So we put that all into our planning to have, have everything available. Well, if, um, you know, obviously with this happening, will this enhance service on the island? I mean, as a byproduct of uh, this new tower? The, well, the, this t the, the real purpose of this new tower is your public safety exactly. communication. Uh, your existing cell service will, will remain the same. It would open up the opportunity if there was, say, a new cell carrier that wanted to deploy on the island. But really, no, the whole purpose for, the, for tonight's exercise, for the, the whole exercise, is to get Charleston County with their new system to help your public safety folks. Other questions? Either side? Um, Linda, please. Um, yes, I would just, I'm just curious, what is the motivation behind leaving the foundation of the old tower? That's, it's, it's typically what we do on a cell site. Um, it's, we might, you know, it might be that someone later wants to put some kind of shelter or platform on top of it so you have a foundation already in place. Uh, it's fairly deep into the ground, so for just future purposes, it, it, might, it might be a good staging area if someone wants to place their equipment on top of it. Uh, we will take it down. The, the entire monopole will go. Mm -hmm. It'll just be, the, you know, the base, the base layer of concrete. Which down the road, as tight as that site is, there could be could be a need where someone might want to put their equ equipment shelter or, or use it to bolt in a platform or something. So it might have a need in the future. Okay. You have concerns on? <laughs> uh, well, I guess you know there would be a couple of treatment concerns that I would have. One, I would want to make sure that leaving it there is consistent with other aspects aspects of our building and zoning ordinance because oh, we sure. certainly wouldn't want something to appear that's in conflict with either one yeah. of those things. Um, and then I guess just to make cl clear for everyone that this is not a new tower, it is merely the refurbing of one that already existed um, adjacent to it. I just want to make that clear because our ordinance doesn't yeah. allow for any new freestanding towers. The right. One that it we is, just passed. The ordinance allows for either the modification or the replacement, mm -hmm. and this is a replacement. Okay. Just want to make that clear. It, it is a replacement. So it, it will be the st the tower will look like it's been there forever, but the steel will become will be new, and the old tower of steel will go away. So mm -hmm. we fall under the replacement category. Okay. <laughs> just want to make that clear for everybody. Okay. Well. No other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Could, uh, let's uh, again modify the agenda you have before you and, and move forward the uh, a resolution, which is on here somewhere. I don't know it's here. It's well, on the tower. Yeah, it's under new. It's under new. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to consider it a motion to move the consideration of resolution to approve the location design of the tower. Move that up to present moment. So moved. Second. second. Motion seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Linda, can you please read the resolution for yes, us? Yes, Resolution by the City Council of the City of Isle of Palm, South Carolina, approving the location and design of communication tower for city public safety uses. It is resolved by the City Council for the City of Isle of Palm's 
South Carolina that whereas City Council recognizes the urgent need to facilitate improvement of radio communications between firefighting, law enforcement, medical emergency, and 9-11 personnel within the city, whereas on April 26, 2011, City Council adopted Ordinance Number 2011-2, which amends Title V Planning and Development Chapter 4, Zoning, Article 1, General Provisions, Sections 5-4-20A, Communication Tower and Antenna Regulations, to provide an exception from the City's zoning regulations for communication towers for City public safety uses, whereas the amended ordinance provides for certain additional requirements for communication towers for City public safety uses, including the requirement that the applicant must obtain approval from City Council <coughs> for the location and design of the communication tower, whereas Charleston County and Crown Ca Castle presented plans for the design and location of a communication tower for the city's public safety uses on April 26, 2011. Now, therefore, be it resolved that City Council and meeting duly assembled approves the location and design of the public safety communication tower as presented, passed and approved by the City Council for the City of Isle of Palm, South Carolina on the 26th day of April, 2011. Richard F. Cronin, Mayor. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Very good. Resolution passes. We're moving. <laughs> I like these prints, so now we have something to work with. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor. You'll be home before the sun sets. <laughs> Still in citizens' comments, we have uh, Mr. Sanders would like to address us. If you Please come forward, state your name, and you have our attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I am now an Isle of Palms resident again. All right. uh, my name is Bayard Sanders. Um, y'all, Some of y'all probably know my, uh, my wife or her parents. Uh, my wife is Rosa Sanders, and her parents are Joan and Otto Martins. Um, I'm here tonight speaking to y'all on behalf of the uh, Florence Crittenden Home. Uh, I am the board president. Uh, quick question. Does anybody here not know anything about the Florence Crittenden home or where it's located? You have to assume that those on camera don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm the board president of uh, the Florence Crittenden home. Last year I was on the board. Uh, quick story on why I'm involved with the Florence Crittenden home. It's a story about a girl named Margaret who was pregnant and unwed and did not have a place to go. Her stepfather closed the door on her and said, you're no longer welcome at this home. She went to her minister. Her minister said there's a place down in Charleston that you can go to, and if you choose to have this child, you can go to this home, and they will provide you with the support you need to have this child. You can either choose to keep this child or you can put this child up for adoption. Uh, Margaret chose to, to put the, her child up for adoption she named the baby Ray. Ray was adopted four months later. Uh, Ray was raised by a loving family, uh, educated, and grew up and had a family. Um, but there was something missing out of Ray. He wanted to find his biological mother. And he did, and he made a phone call and he said, Margaret, this is Ray. I was born in 1963, is this a good time to talk? It was a long pause, and she said, well, I don't know. And then Ray spoke from his heart and said, well, I only have two things to tell you. Number one, I want to thank you for your decision. And number two, I just want to let you know I'm okay. I was adopted by a loving family, Jim and Rosie Sanders, and they named me Baird Sanders. I am baby Ray. <laughs> so I have something real close to my heart about this place. Excuse me. But um, since being a resident and... Uh, a new resident again. Um, I'm asking the city of Isle of Palms if there's any opportunities for y'all to help the Florence Crittenden programs. I have a packet here that I, I, I wouldn't want to go over every piece of it, but there's one pe or two pieces I'd like to share with y'all. Um, I'm actually doing a swim around Key West on June 4th. It's a 12 and a half mile swim. Uh, before I was elected president in January, I was doing the swim as a personal goal. Uh, since becoming president, I realized we needed some money coming in at home pretty fast. And being in the pool for two to three hours in the morning training, uh, m my mind seems to think a lot. Uh, I came up with the idea of dedicating the swim to the Florence Crittenden programs. Um, 
that's on June 4th. I have a flyer that I can share with y'all. Um, if there's anything that the city can do, help me uh, promote, or uh, y'all please share it with your friends. Um, I have everything on email, so whatever you need, I can give it to you, uh, which will be in this packet. Um, also, the month of May, we have a Adopt a Mom program to where if you uh, know of somebody that might have a heart for adoption, uh, it's only set up to where you can donate for what it costs to home per day. And I think the fi I got the figures right here. Um, per day, it's $125. If you choose to adopt a mother for a week, it's 1000 or a month, 4000 or trimester, $10,000. Um, so I have these two events, and we also have the uh, Farmer's Market, May 3rd, uh, Mount Pleasant Farmer's Market, 3 o'clock. We'll have an awareness booth. Uh, awareness booth is my number one goal with the Florence Crittenden program. I want to raise a positive awareness of the home. There's so many people that still think the, the, uh, I have to share this with you all real quick. Chip Campson uh, invited us up February to speak in front of the Senate. And uh, I went to high school with Chip, even though he was a lot older than me. But uh, he, <laughs> um, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> since I was on camera. He did, he did the fifth grade six times. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, Chip introduced us, uh, our executive director, uh, Lisa Belton, and one of our board members, uh, the honorary uh, Ruth Cup. And uh, the way Chip presented it was uh, very nice. Uh, that, and he said that for all you senators that don't know, the Florence Crinton home is not in Florence, South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's my number one goal is to raise a positive awareness of the home. It's real easy for me to do it with my story. Um, my second goal is that we raise enough money by the end of the fiscal year of June 30th that we have showed a positive trend for the last three months to where it'll make it easier for our board and any future board to go out and ask uh, for money. And, and during these times, it is very hard to do. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that I'm in this position now. I honestly believe that. So. Um, also, um, be sure to pick up your May Skirt magazine. Um, there will be a very, I forget the, the saying of the guy that wears a skirt, mm -hmm. he's very original. <laughs> uh, that's me, so um, please do that. Um, any questions before I leave you all back to y'all's meeting? Well, you've not only addressed us, you've addressed all the residents of the island. Uh, this will be broadcast tomorrow night, so I'm hoping. Uh, your name and, and uh, cause will be heard throughout the island in, uh, in the next couple of days. So, well, thank you very much. Leave, leave this material with us. We'll make sure that uh, everybody here gets a copy of it, and we'll see what uh, can be done, if nothing else, through our website. Thank you all else. so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Marie can hold on to all the material. She never loses a thing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, moving on. Reports for standing committees. First up, Ways and Means Committee. We met on uh, 545 on Tuesday the 19th. Seems like only last week. Oh, it was only last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we heard from our treasurer. At uh, three quarters of the way through the year, um, we our budgets seem solid. Uh, our revenue stream is just under 70 percent as of the end of March, but I'll comment on that here momentarily. Uh, well, I'll com comment on it now. Our, our property tax, we received another check from the county, uh, and uh, our property tax budget will actually be met um, by monies already on hand. So uh, while we had some trepidation earlier in the year as to whether property tax would be uh, flowing adequately, it has been uh, met and our budget uh, will be achieved. Uh, already uh, here in the middle of April. Our general fund expenditures are running at 68 percent, not 75 percent, which is what the uh, the calendar would show. So we're well ahead on uh, expenditures. Virtually all departments are ahead of their day-to-day -day expenditures. Uh, I say ahead, meaning lower than, <laughs> not ahead, meaning further ahead. So we're doing very well. Uh, Linda and the entire City staff have been uh, very diligent in making sure that they spend only the monies that are necessary, and I'm, uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, we're, we're well on the way to meeting our goal of being under budget uh, by the end of the year. Uh, our monies are on deposit with very little interest but fully protected, so that's the best I can say for the funds on hand. Uh, 
when we look at our tourism schedules, our state accommodations tax is still 9.5% greater than the same period last year. Our municipal accommodations tax is running 19% ahead of last year. That's a more timely figure, by the way, because the state accommodations tax only comes to us in quarterly chunks, and we've only received two payments from the state, but the municipal is, is current up through, uh, up through March. Uh, our hospitality tax, which is food and beverage on the island, is running 9% ahead of what it did last year. So uh, there are more people visiting the island. The residents are enjoying the island, uh, eating at our fine restaurants and enjoying everything we have to offer, and that's uh, proving out in the, in the uh, income we receive. <coughs> uh, we reviewed our beach restoration, not much activity there. The 53rd through 57th project will be touched upon by our Public Works uh, Committee, but uh, uh, the funds are well within the scope on that project. We've received no more change notices, and that's good news. City Hall renovation is uh, well underway, almost complete, punch list items only. Correct, Douglas? Um, and we have some painting to do, et cetera. So uh, that's uh, nearing completion and should be uh, well taken care of here shortly. We have one item uh, that we have to deal with tonight of note, and that is our Public Works ice maker is no longer functioning. And if you've been out and about in the last few days, Public Works personnel need ice. Uh, we have secured, Public Works Department has secured three bids for the replacement of the ice machine and the lowest bid was $3,046. So I'd like to propose a motion uh, to, to spend up to $3,100 from our capital projects funds to replace the ice maker for the Public Works Department. Second. I'll make that as a motion. We have a second. Any discussion on ice, and ice making? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we moved on in our discussion to looking at FY12. I am uh, and spent a fair amount of time in a workshop going through all of the details one more time. This is probably the third pass through every every one of the detailed uh, budgets, both uh, particularly on the expense side. First time we actually took a good look at the revenue side. I am pleased to report that the general fund revenue will be uh, is expected to be up by 0.9 percent. I know that's hard to calculate, but 0.9 percent is near 1 percent in our forecast uh, for next year. Well, our general fund expenditures uh, will only be up by 0.5 percent. So uh, we're controlling our, our expenditures well within our revenue stream that uh, we anticipate. Uh, the consequence of which we'll deal with here shortly, but we anticipate no change in our millage, so our tax rates will be the same for the forthcoming year. So um, that's all very good. We have projects and capital projects underway and funded uh, adequately for the next year and our fund balances will be there to support all of that. Each department uh, is at or about zero on their changes in expenditures for the course of the year, such that we're, our expenditures will only be, as they indicated before, 0.5 percent higher than they were uh, last year, So that's uh, or this fiscal year. So that's very good. And uh, we anticipate uh, coming in ahead of budget for the coming year, this fiscal year that we're in, that will roll forward. Those funds that, that we don't spend or receive will move into our fund balances so we can increase our fund battle balances for capital projects, et cetera, in the ensuing, uh, for the ensuing years. So all that said, uh, the Ways and Means Committee uh, meeting adjourned about, what time is it, 8 o'clock? 8.35 uh, on the 19th. We did make uh, a couple of changes for Council's benefit uh, since we met. Uh, and that is by recognizing that we had additional income stream coming to us for the uh, uh, for property tax. We were a little more comfortable in the property tax area for our projections for next year. We did increase the gallons of fuel uh, in our projections for all departments from $4 a gallon to $4.25. Still a fair amount of risk as to whether <laughs> $4.25 will be adequate, but uh, we have been able to put that in, into the plan. We have accounted for any changes in the health plan, uh, talked about it, ways and means. Uh, that's accounted for in the city council's budget. Uh, the biggest change that you need to note, if you haven't caught up with your uh, notes, <coughs> notes from Linda, is that uh, when we met, we talked about paying off the lease on the 90-foot ladder early. Um, after review, it looked like paying off the MAC 
garbage truck, the 2009 lease, uh, would be the same principle, but will actually save us more, uh, more interest in, over a longer period of time. So we are now in the budget you've seen uh, here tonight, uh, have, the, have the MAC garbage truck paid off accordingly to save the additional interest uh, burden there. And so we will continue to look at opportunities when we have uh, funds available to, to pay down any and all debts that the city holds. Uh, but we're chomping at it as we go forward. So that's, uh, in essence, the, uh, the changes since we last met, and that's the report from Ways and Means. Any, any questions at this point? Mayor, let me just comment just for sure. uh, the public. The next Ways and Means Committee meeting, we normally meet on uh, the third Tuesday, but ne the next Ways and Means meeting has been moved to Tuesday, May 10th. So for those who are keeping track, it's probably good to note that it is going to be at a different time next month. And we'll hold seats for any and all that want to come. <laughs> it's usually a riveting time. Right? Hey. <laughs> okay, uh, no questions on Ways and Means. Let's move on to Public Safety Committee. Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Public Safety Committee met Monday, April 4th. Um, under citizens comments, we discussed our alarm ordinance and had quite a discussion on that as actually back with the Planning Commission and, and we'll be hearing more about that. We reviewed the FY12 capital and operating budgets, as you just heard, and, and then we reviewed them again in the Ways and Means Committee meeting. And let me get through the pages of what we reviewed on that budget to the next item we have on our agenda here. Under new business, we uh, discussed the livabilities um, court's request for a home detention ordinance. It was not an official request, but it's something we were asked to discuss, and it is something that uh, we determined the city would not be doing. Uh, this is something Charleston County is not doing either. We discussed uh, command positions in the police department. As you, as you know, Lieutenant Wright, our assistant chief, has retired, and we're looking at some restructuring in the Police Department. This would not involve uh, any more additional any additional personnel. In fact, we would uh, be operating with the same number of personnel we have now, with one person retired. That has gone to the Personnel Committee to review job descriptions, and they'll be acting on that in the next meeting. Went on to departmental reports in the Fire Department. There had been a small oil spill reported at the marina which turned out to be just a slight overfill of the gas tank they saw some oil sheen but but we can't be too careful with the environment around here there was a tour bus fire on front beach uh, that was a yes a big tour bus and it was on fire i believe it was a a, a band tour bus and, and pretty much burned <laughs> there was an alarm uh, Activation at Sweetgrass Pavilion as a result of a sump pup that had shorted out. That was taken care of. And Isle Palms personnel assisted with the wildfires in Allendon on March 23rd and 24th. And of course, assisted several people in installing fire alarms in their residences. Um, we had requested the chief to start tracking EMS response time. And, and she's doing that. We're, we're kind of fine-tuning what format that is going to be so we can capture that information. Those are the highlights of the fire department. Police department, um, we had four young ladies from Berkeley County that were stealing things from a front, business, front beach business. They were apprehended. We had several uh, underage liquor possessions. Had some juveniles that were spray painting cars. In fact, they did damage to uh, charged with 14 separate incidences. During the month of March, dispatchers re responded to 3,900 calls. 2,955 were for the police department. 1,227 building checks were performed. 429 traffic stops generated, which resulted in 169 tickets. 
Also, Administrator Tucker advised us, and I'm advising you, please keep your bicycles and golf carts locked up as we're seeing a little bit of rash of theft at spring. Uh, people are out, spring break, so, so keep everything um, secure. In conclusion, and this, this is really, really great, Chief Buchanan announced the police department had received its third accreditation from the CALEA in Bethesda, Maryland on March 26th. Uh, the city, the mayor and I accompanied the, the chief and his team up there. Uh, we received a wonderful report. And, and keep in mind, this is a national accreditation. We are there with uh, cities like Seattle, Washington, um, Bellevue, Washington, King County Police, which is the county that Seattle is in, uh, numerous other large agencies. We're meeting the same standards that those folks are, and we should be very proud of our police department. So uh, thank you again, Chief. Uh, that said, our next meeting date will be Tuesday, May 3rd, right here in Council Chambers at 5 30. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, only my only comment is uh, that Kalia's Commission on Law Enforcement Accreditation, if anybody doesn't understand the terminology, but uh, our chief inquisitor, commissioner, was an associate justice of the, of the Supreme Court of the State of Wyoming. Not sure he knew much about beaches, but <laughs> <laughs> we tried to educate him, uh, and uh, the chief, we did a good job. He was... Uh, he was tamed after after we got through with him. So, thank you. Any other questions for public safety? None heard. Thank you. Public Works, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> public Works Committee met on Thursday, April seventh, here in Council Chambers at four o'clock. Uh, we reviewed the monthly report. As everybody knows, our trash is still getting picked up on a very regular basis. Um, <clears throat> and we always thank thank our crew for for being responsive to. Um, all the residents' needs with regards to that. Uh, Director Pitts informed us that we had passed our operator's licenses for um, our underground storage tanks, which is uh, significant so that we can keep on pumping gas into our police cars and fire trucks, and that's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. Um, we also had a report on the drainage project, uh, 53rd to 57th. Well, I'd like to report now that we are now finally away from the villages, the hole has been filled in, and there is some vegetation in place there. And we're moving along towards uh, Marsh Island for the outfall. So that project is, is going forward and has not had any further hitches with regards to that. We then, of course, reviewed our budget items, both capital and operating budgets. Um, details are in the, in the budget. All I can say is that um, we are reducing Public Works budget again this year, and so again, kudos goes to Director Pitts for his hard work at trying to to save the citizens a, a buck every place he can. Other than that, we adjourned, and our next meeting is scheduled for May second at four o'clock here. Very good. Any questions for Public Works? Oh, let yeah, me just please. point out too. Besides, uh, they had to pick up all the yard debris by hand for the last month, but we were supposed to get our cat back on Friday. I don't know if it's... It, it, it is. We're back in service today. Okay, the cat's back in service, so <laughs> folks, cat, trim your trees. Go for it. Donnie can pick it up now. <laughs> uh, I know Donnie's not here, and I'm not sure you're armed with the report from the hazardous material collection. I don't have that with me, except that it was... I know that we had better than last year with fewer cars going through. So we, we, we delivered more material for hazardous waste, but fewer, fewer people came through the system. So from a volume perspective, we were good. So we're happy with it, and the county's yep. happy with mm -hmm. it, yes. and, and the citizens should be happy with it. So uh, we should do it again next year. Is that the general consensus? That, that is the general consensus. Okay, good. Uh, very good. Recreation Committee. <coughs> yes, the Recreation Committee met on April 5th. Uh, our rec center, as always, is very busy. 
this past weekend. We had the Easter egg hunt. I hope some of you attended. Huge success with perfect weather. The rec department, with the help of the teenagers, was prepared with 800 bags of candy. So I don't know how many kids were there, but pretty close to 800. Uh, we had the annual yard sale, also a success, even though there was iffy weather. All the spaces were sold out. All of our summer camps are just about full, and baseball season has started. Rehearsals are ongoing for Peter Pan this spring. Upcoming the end of the month is the Pip Piccolo Spoleto Sand Sculpting Contest, which will play, take place May 28th at 9 a.m. Um, like all the other committees, we worked on the budget and managed to reduce the operating budget by $6,000 while no line items were increased. Uh, the annual turtle team meeting will be held on May 5th at 7 o'clock. And relative to that, speaking for the turtle team, I'd like to remind everyone that the IOP lighting ordinance goes into effect as of May 1st. The turtles are back. We received, uh, we rescued a turtle out by the pier a couple of days ago, and that turtle is now at the uh, Aquarium Turtle Hospital. So if uh, SC season develops the way Georgia and Florida is, we can count on turtle nests very soon. So remember, lights out for turtles. Um, our next meeting will be on May 3rd at 4 o'clock at City Hall. Question? Please. I think I read somewhere in the packet that the sand sculpting event going forward is not going to be really a public piccolo. What? Just any explanation? Of Linda? I, I'm not What's prepared to explain that, <laughs> but I will certainly find out the answer to that. Did question. you see that? You, I did read that. Yeah, I did, I did too, it. but I don't remember. That's always a huge event. Yes. Right. It's the same thing was, as it was last year. It was last. It was not part of the Piccolo Spoleto. Right. We call it Piccolo Spoleto, but they don't. Huh? Right. Huh. Uh, uh, it, it was at one time a, a, an event of Piccolo Spoleto, and it just became, you know, Piccolo Spoleto goes to the beach. Right. And last year that got dropped. Um, and I can't recall what the reason he was right off the top of my head. But. Okay. I can't I'll have to check on it and get the answer to this. Didn't call it tonight. No. Regar regardless, we're going to have sand sculpture. Right. Yes. Whatever we want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> call it. Mr. Mayor, I, I, I would suggest that we start thinking of a, our own name for that yeah. contest. Yeah. Oh. So well, yeah. I know we got some creative minds out there, so we'll come up with an idea. <laughs> send us your messages, send us your names, tweets. Sand sculpting sounds pretty good to me, frankly. But. Sand oh. castles are us. Sand castles are us. All right. <laughs> Personnel committee, please report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The regular meeting of the personnel committee was held at 545 Wednesday, April 13th. Attending were Councilman Batelli, meeting and uh, Chair Thomas, Administrator Tucker, Ms. Assistant Administrator Zaban, and the uh, City Clerk Copeland. The meeting was called to order. The minutes from the March meeting were passed unanimously. There were no citizen comments. The city's administrator's 2011 performance objectives were passed uh, unanimously. Uh, this was followed by a considerable discussion of the uh, FY 2011-2012 operating capital budget and uh, building department. Uh, under new business, uh, Councilman Peeting mo moved that uh, Bev Ballo and Dr. Reed Wiseman be appointed to the Ad Hoc Water Committee. This was passed unanimously, and I would like to make a motion that Council does the same. Okay. Motion Second. and Second. seconded. Any discussion on this? We've lost two members of that committee uh, already, and, and Bev really would be an asset there, and, and if uh, Dr. Weissman is interested, in, yes. he's already mm -hmm. confirmed. Yes. So that's an excellent addition. So, okay. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Um, uh, this was followed by a discussion of the command positions of the police department brought about by the retirement of Lieutenant Wright. The chief was asked to present the proposed organization changes to the safety committee, including organization charts uh, for their concurrence prior to presenting this to the personnel committee for salary ranges and job description approval prior to presentation to the city council for approval. Uh, the March safety winners are from the recreation department, Will McElhaney, Fire Department Jason Smith, Police Department Derek Ambus, and uh, Public Works Joseph Washington. There was no exec executive session required, and the next and the meeting was re adjourned at 6:45. The next meeting will be at 5:45 Wednesday, May 4th. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for personnel? Not heard. All right, Real Property Committee. Please. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Uh, the Real Property Committee met on uh, Thursday, April 7th at 8.30 a.m. Um, <clears throat> first uh, meeting started off with a um, presentation from um, Wesley Westmoreland from uh, South Carolina Electric and Gas. 
discussing upgrades of the system that they are proposing. One is uh, allow technology to allow for SCNG to find problems quicker and identify what the problem is and dispatch. So basically using technology that uh, they will be able to fix problems quicker and uh, result in uh, you know less outages and we're faster uh, up uh, back on service like that so uh, what they're doing is they're uh, completing uh, burying lines on a forest trail and uh, it's an ongoing problem of uh, burning lines so uh, <clears throat> also uh, with uh, that is that in order to upgrade the system SCNG will be installing a new hundred and five foot tower on their property right out adjacent to um, City Hall on that piece of property and uh, that's well within their uh, lease or rate arrangement with the city so uh, they will be moving on that and that will allow the height to uh, for the uh, different sensors to pick up different signals to report outages and again improve this turnaround and service as far as uh, keeping the power on on Isle Palms. Next on the agenda was uh, the beach restoration. Uh, they're still working on that as far as coming back and finishing comments on that. Uh, next was uh, the dredging update. Um, basically, it looks like uh, we had a presentation from Jack Walker and Joe Evans from uh, GEL um, Consultants. And basically, it looks like the Army Corps of Engineers really tried to discourage Isle Palms from using the spoil site on Goat Island and encouraging us to uh, look at Little Goat Island spoil site. Um, part of the problem on Little Go on Goat Island is that the spoil site was damaged by a third party and for us to use that site, um, the Army Corps of Engineers would ask us to do significant upgrades to repair that site and it could be uh, upward of a couple hundred thousand dollars even. So. So as far as the dredging project, it's going along and uh, moving along. And <clears throat> uh, Councilman Stone made a motion to uh, to pass the uh, dredging depth to be 12 feet, and it was that was passed unanimously. And do we need to bring that in front of Council? No. no. Okay. Moving along on new business, uh, there was a discussion um, brought on about parking lot leases, and basically the conversation was, you know, what is the best option for the city? Are we capturing all the uh, uh, income we possibly can to be used for uh, different projects. And uh, after a lot of discussion on that, it was uh, basically looking at uh, several options uh, for the city to review. One option is we stay the way we are right now. We have two years left on the lease. Uh, two would be renegotiate the lease. We try to secure higher income. Or three, look at other options besides that. Right. And I'd like to bring in forward the uh, City Council to get a sentiment of uh, what direction uh, we would like to look at as far as uh, moving forward, as far as changing uh, the parking lot leases at this time. As, as um, Michael has indicated, the, uh, there are two more seasons, if you will, on, on the existing lease. We're, we're in the first of those two seasons. And so there'll be one season left, 2012, uh, and we're upon probably this time next year or before this time next year, we'll be going out for an RFP trying to figure out uh, what the future holds on, on parking or choosing to do it ourselves if that was the option that uh, council so elected. We could, uh, if, if the current leaseholder was interested, we could open up a discussion to, to extend his lease and renegotiate the terms and, and things of that nature in order to drive a higher income stream for the city. Um, or, or or not uh, we also could just not I don't recommend it we could actually terminate his lease after proper notice and then start over again uh, so those are basically the three options we discussed and uh, we took no action on them we thought we'd discuss it here to hear from council as far as what the general interest was so I, I think I mean I'll, I'll speak first I I just soon let the let it run its course where it is right now through 11 and, and 12. We're in the middle of a parking initiative, trying to understand what parking uh, changes we're going to be making on the island, which may or may may have a dramatic impact on the activity at the Front Beach uh, parking facilities, both the county as well as ours. Uh, so until we have a better handle on what that is, I just soon not try and reshape something we don't really know what it's going to look like. 
So I, I, I agree with that thinking. I think that we're in the one season. We only have one season left. The planning isn't done on the parking plan, so it probably will take till next season to get that done. So I'd leave it the way it is. Okay. Any other comments, I, Martin? I, I agree. Also, uh, we've got an existing contract. I, I, I don't know what message it would send to other folks that, that deal with the city if we just decide to terminate a contract so we can get a better deal. We, that's our legal No, I mean, we could, uh, the, the current leaseholder did approach us a while ago about extending the terms okay. of his lease. And, and uh, at that time we said, no, we could open a discussion, which would be not only terms, but it have to be more financially beneficial right. to us also. But any other comments? None heard, I, I oh, think. I'm <laughs> I've, I've expressed my you. comments on this before, but just to reiterate them, again, my comments have nothing to do with the with the leaseholder, I think, who's doing a great job. I, I do think the city's leaving an awful lot of money on the table, and at some point in the future, we need to maximize all of our revenue streams. And I think to, I don't think running a parking lot is an extremely complicated operation. I don't think it's a high-risk operation. I don't think it requires an excessive amount of administrative time. And to <clears throat> be putting the kind of numbers out that we've just, that we've discussed before, uh, in the six-figure six range to run a parking lot just seems a little excessive to me. I think the city could get a better deal. Um, whether we need to do that now, I think is reasonable for, you know, that's reasonable for discussion. I do think at some point, I don't know if real property has talked about this, about putting some type of gate there that records how many cars go in and out a day. This is a total cash operation. And I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Don't, don't get me wrong, but it's a cash operation. Anyone that's been involved in a cash business knows you have to have strong internal controls to make sure that cash isn't kind of walking out of there. And I just wonder if, if that has been talked about or looked into. Not to my knowledge. No, we have not discussed it. It's, but it's uh, a it's a fruitful area of concern. Mm -hmm. Any cash business, whether parking is just a small cash, mm -hmm. uh, is worthwhile. Um, and that would be on. I mean, the current leaseholder isn't going to go to the expense of putting no. in a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of control. So we'd have to do all of that. With that said, I, I think my, my recommendation is we leave it the way it is. Work to. Uh, and Linda has already started exploring what it would take for the city to operate that <coughs> lot in the future. And we can continue that pursuit. Um, and at the appropriate time, we would decide to do it ourselves or, or go out for bid or go out for bid, see what that brings, and then choose to accept the bid or do it ourselves also. But, uh, we need some time to prepare all that. So, Well, I'd like to add if um, we are going to go in that, you know, to look at all the options and if we are going to do it ourselves. I think it would be very prudent for the city to study what is being done right now for this season and next season so we do have that knowledge of the operation if we should decide to take that in-house at some point down the road. And so I, I really think it's something that we should probably make, uh, add, uh, you know, we may or may not do it, but if, it, if we don't study it and really know what, have our arms around it, we're not going to be really if that's the best way to go for the city. So I do think it it's going to take considerable due diligence now and next year in order for us to make the best decision for the city. Good. I think real property, can we can scope out the uh, the items that we're talk you're talking about as far as what we need to understand about operating the lot where, as it's operated now and, and how it could operate in the future with the counters and other factors like that. Uh, we can do that in the next couple of months and be prepared to do something at the end of the existing ones. So, that said, to move on. Move on. Um, next on uh, um, real property. We're not done yet. Do we make a motion? You no, did no. you make a motion? Do we need a motion? I didn't make a motion. No, no. You did not? No. No, we did not. Okay. I don't no, believe we, we need we have a motion. The, we, we, I think we have a consensus to, right. without a motion. Okay. Right. Um, on Next on the real property was Greenbelt funding. Um, the city has been looking for opportunities to take advantage of the uh, half cent green uh, half cent tax that provide green belt for various communities and uh, compliment Mayor Cronin for being extremely creative and uh, hopefully it will pay off as far as uh, finding ways to spend that money which is already in the bank in our name but we can't touch it unless we have the right project. 
Right. So with that said, um, I'd like to move back to the resolution of uh, your second. All right. Sorry. Um, resolution as far as uh, using uh, Greenbelt monies. And uh, Linda, you're great at reading. <laughs> you. preferred. Resolution by the City Council of the City of Isle of Palm, South Carolina, to pursue Greenbelt funding for the acquisition of undeveloped beachfront properties. It is resolved by the City Council for the City of Isle of Palm, South Carolina, that whereas the City of Isle of Palms is committed to the preservation of open space on the island, and whereas the City recognizes that the opportunities for the preservation of the natural environment on an island with a finite amount of land is even more critical, and whereas those portions of the island untouched by development and remaining in their natural state are extremely limited, and whereas <coughs> the City's comprehensive plan has a goal to, quote, promote the maintenance of green spaces throughout the island, end quote, and whereas the city's plan identifies a strategy to, quote, investigate the potential for establishing small parks on city-owned, undeveloped green spaces, end quote, and whereas the city's local comprehensive beach management plan advocates the preservation of the public's access to the beach, and whereas Charleston County's comprehensive green belt plan identifies, quote, view preservation, end quote, as a benefit and function of green space with water features as a key location, and whereas the city endeavors to be responsive to the, these goals and to preserve one of the few remaining beachfront lots in its natural state. Now, therefore, be it resolved that City Council, in meeting duly assembled, shall pursue funding for the acquisition of the undeveloped beachfront properties identified as tax map numbers 572-10-00-204 and 572-10-00-244 10-00-244 to preserve this property for scenic view, habitat pres preservation, and beach access for its natural and historic significance to all residents and visitors to the island. Passed and approved by City Council for the City of Isle of Palm, South Carolina on the 26th day of <laughs> April 2011. Richard F. Cronin, Mayor. The resolution. <laughs> <laughs> she well did done. take a breath. Was yeah. that only one? <laughs> one. <laughs> Couldn't have done it better myself. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution as read. Se second. Motion and seconded. Uh, to savor, we'll have some discussion on this, just to save everybody looking up the tax map numbers. Uh, the address in question is uh, 3206 Palm Boulevard. And as you look at that property, you'll see that it is uh, still in its natural, undisturbed state, uh, fully treed, et cetera. It's, it's probably the only one left on the island that is in its natural condition. Not really, if you look at it, it looks like it has never been affected by Yugo. Uh, it is a unique piece of property. It's obviously not cheap, um, but we have had discussions with the current owner, um, <coughs> who obviously is, is now interested in selling the property. Um, frankly, we have green belt monies that we can apply. Green belt monies that we have in hand are not sufficient. We're looking for other sources of funds whether they be grant funds from other uh, locations or whether we can go back and seek other additional resources from the Green Belt Committee, uh, that's yet to be seen. But uh, we have identified a project, uh, it's identified by this resolution, and, and I'm hoping we can proceed on. There's a, there's a good probability we don't come to terms with the current owner with the funds that we have available or can secure, but so be it. If we, haven't, if we never try, we'll never get there. So, uh, I understand that there are freezers with contents ah. marked as fish that might help. <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that's something we'll share with everybody after <laughs> but uh, it could be the way and, and it's been discussed on the island and if citizens want to come forward and, and really feel warm towards this please make yourself known to members of council or staff or myself anytime um, you know any Individuals want to get involved, help raise money, do whatever we can do to uh, try and secure this last piece of heaven that's been undisturbed on the island. And frankly, it's but virtually in the middle of the island. And we keep it in its preserved state. Uh, we may put a couple of park benches in it and use it for access to the beach. But it's uh, right in the middle of the island and very convenient location. Mr. Mayor, so, I'd like to add to that. Mm -hmm. and I want to make sure everyone's aware that that would be a tax write-off under our current IRS rules. Any contribution? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So not only would you be helping the island, but saving tax there money. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like all this. <laughs> so 
Uh, with that, do we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Very All good. right. Uh, next, we uh, real property discuss the uh, marina budget and the uh, budgets for the city and uh, move forward to which will move through the uh, ways and means. Uh, and lastly, we discussed uh, rents uh, for the island and make sure that um, all tenants were current and uh, one tenant was unfortunately behind and uh, I can uh, tell you the uh, city administrator has taken a uh, aggressive action on making sure that we are current and uh, we are the city is receiving those funds on a timely basis. And uh, with that, the meeting was adjourned and um, the next meeting is scheduled for May 11th at 8.30 a.m. All welcome. The uh, only comment I'm going to make is we have invited South Carolina Electric Gas to come and make a presentation to us about what their plans are for increasing the reliability on the island, et cetera, at our next council meeting. So that uh, not only council, but the citizens involved can, can understand what they're trying to do. But uh, it should be encouraging for, uh, for something we take for granted. Granted is being the lights being on. So, thank you very much. Uh, reports from boards and commissions you have in your possession, accommodations tax, zoning appeals, and the planning commission. Any comments or discussions? We'll be getting back to the accommodation tax advisory committee since they did not pass a budget out of their committee. Uh, they're having another meeting in the first week of May, I think it is, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be getting back with them. Um, moving on to second reading, ordinance 2011-1, ordinance amending Title V Planning and Development Chapter 4 Zoning, Article 7, Signs. City of Alabama Code of Ordinances providing regulations pertaining to sandwich boards. You have in your possession both the original uh, ordinance as read at first hearing, so I'm uh, reading. I'm going to ask for a motion to amend to conform with the redrafted as Douglas has presented to us from the Planning Commission. I have a motion to amend the ordinance such. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Seconded. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Not heard. Okay, we're dealing with the ordinance uh, that really adds from the original the one item that the sign shall be located no more than 15 feet from the primary public entrance door to the business establishment. So uh, I'd like to make a motion for second reading of the ordinance before us. Uh, and uh, amend as the as amended and suspend the reading. So moved. Second. Motion, motion second. and seconded. Any discussions further on sign ordinance dealing with sandwich boards? None heard. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Motion carries. Hey, Thank you very much. Before you go um, into the next items on the agenda, you may want to announce um, as part of the Planning Commission's meeting, ah. the upcoming special meeting between Council and the Planning Commission okay. associated with parking. The, the uh, Planning Commission is asked to meet with us again. We have scheduled a date of the 11th, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Mm -hmm. um, six o'clock. Six o'clock, we'll be meeting with the Planning Commission. Uh, Probably here. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Do you the question that it's going to be a court hearing? Solomon's Island? Solomon's Island Court. So that's on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So we're good. So we'll be meeting in this room. I did not have any questions. Okay. So we'll be meeting in this room with the Planning Commission at 6 o'clock. Uh, the subject being the parking study that's uh, ongoing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm just trying to tick off everything. So it's first reading. So you that. Now we're down to first reading, ordinance to raise the revenue and adopt a budget for the City of Isle of Palms, South Carolina for the fiscal year July 1st, 2011-2012. You have in your possession such an ordinance. I just can't find it. There it is. Um, as I indicated in the Ways and Means presentation, uh, this budget uh, if adopted will uh, result in no tax increase for the city will result in uh, continued uh, due diligence on the part of the city staff to reduce our expenses as our revenues have uh, not materially changing. And, uh, but we are 
able to present a balanced budget, and uh, that's what we're, this ordinance deals with. So, can I have a motion to approve Ordinance 2011-5, raise the revenue? So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, I would just like to add, um, one, uh, number one, I think the city and uh, the department uh, heads did a phenomenal job, a lot of work and a lot of squeezing just to try to get the number where we are right now. And uh, I want to compliment everyone for their hard work and due diligence. Uh, I also like to say that um, we are not raising taxes again this year, and uh, that's something that I think to be noted in these tough economic times. Um, we've been able to, uh, to manage uh, very tightly to that. and. Well done to the city. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I'll, and just one more comment. Um, I'm, I'm not going to support this budget as of yet, just for the fact that I haven't had the opportunity to go back through mm -hmm. all the departments and discuss it yet um, since we've got the revenue sheet. Um, obviously, the public sector is a little bit different than the private sector. We base our expenditures on our revenues, and the private sector kind of is a little bit opposite. They give us all our expenditures, then make, make the revenues meet it. Um, in the fact that we're not raising our taxes, the fact we're borrowing nearly six hundred and sixty thousand dollars of our reserve funds, so um, and of our savings, basically, and we can only continue to do that. We borrowed nearly seven hundred thousand last year to balance our budget. So and we just have to be aware of that. It's you know, although the, it is a budget, a balanced budget, it's because we are continuing to dip into our savings. We can only do that so many more years before we'll have a substantial tax increase. So. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, but we actually didn't. Our budget anticipated a reduction in our reserves for this year, but in fact, we're not dipping into our reserves in this fiscal year yeah. because of the prudence of the staff. And, and well, no, it has been a very prudent staff. But when you go through and you, know, you go through and it, some of the expenditures, that says you know, $144,000 to be funded with accumulated surplus for previous years. I understand, but that that that, <coughs> that savings continues to come down. And the fact that we've had a number of, I mean, we've had a wonderful year in accommodations and municipal, and I think a lot of that might be spiked from our, you know, the Gulf oil spill. Um, I don't know how much longer that will sustain. But until I can get back and talk to the departments on this as well, I, just, I'm, I, okay. I don't feel supportive of you know, okay. passing it yet, although, although it is a very tight budget. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, first reading, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. One no. Okay. Moving on. First reading by title only, Ordinance 2011-6, an ordinance granting consent for an application for video services and setting a franchise fee. This is, uh, as you can see from the material presented to you, this would be a franchise fee for AT&T to provide video service. A, something we don't get now, but to figure out what they're offering with the <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get down but uh, let me ask Linda to explain as best she can okay I will explain only as best I can because that you know the technology is a little bit of wizardry for us but I as I understand this this is just one more menu offering out there by another provider uh, that will allow for uh, TV via the via your web base um, and will allow for a lot more um, bells and whistles because everybody's kind of selling features because everyone seems to be selling the same thing. And this will be AT&T's version. Um, I well, was able to speak in my recent trip to Atlanta to some people in that market that already have this oh, okay. um, in that market. And, um, you know, there, there are some things that they enjoy about it. Uh, but some of the competitors have some features, some of the same competitors that we have uh, out here, like Comcast and some others, offer some things that are equally um, as attractive. So it's just, just a matter of which provider uh, that you want to opt with. And the AT&T representative could not be here with us tonight to provide the demo and fully explain it, but he will be able to be here prior to second reading um, of this ordinance. Um, and so if, in fact, uh, there are concerns that you all have between now and second reading or at that presentation that would stop you from wanting to grant this franchise, then you'll have the opportunity to do that at that time. I do not know what the time frame is for a launch. Uh, these revenues, this 5%, 
uh, is not reflected in the revenue line items of the budget that we're considering. So if if the if you guys granted the franchise and the launch was uh, sometime during the next fiscal year, then those would be uh, revenues in addition to what we have projected in our budget, which might offset increases in fuel that might be beyond what we uh, are. <laughs> so that's Just a, a good part of this is it makes it interactive that you can uh, almost as you do on your internet, you can go back and request a particular TV show as opposed to having them just send it to you. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just more. It's more on demand, that's all. Right. That's what it sounds right. like. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, is re this is required, uh, they're requesting this, but it's the, the franchise would be granted by the state of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. We, as a, as a subset of that, uh, establish the fee and the authorization right to, uh, to use our rights of ways, et cetera. So, uh, I guess my question is, <clears throat> since most of their infrastructure is already in place, is there, did they announce any uh, impact to uh, what they're already using in the rights of way? Um, I did not get any indication that there would be, but we would certainly be able to fully vet those questions before second reading. Um, it, it, it seemed more to me, that, and this was just my perception, it seemed more like it was just one more feature of what they are multiple more features of what they have out there already. It seems like if I read their literature, and I'm not sure if I'm the only one who got a copy. No, no, okay. everyone okay. got a copy. If, if they have fiber optics within a half, mm -hmm. roughly half a mile of your property, then then you can avail yourself of this feature. Right. And I think the entire island is they have at least the backbone of fiber mm -hmm. optics all the way down. So most people would be within half a mile of it. So I'd rather have a fiber right to my house. <laughs> You talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> Marty. I, I have a question. I, I'd, I'd first like to state that I'm a retired <laughs> Bell South guy, and, and as such, AT&T is part paying. They don't pay me a pension. I didn't go for that. Um, they do pay part of my medical benefits. Uh, my question is, uh, we're approving the maximum franchise fee rate. Uh, are we, is this the same rate that we are charging Comcast? No, sir. No. It is two percentage points higher than what we are char currently charging Comcast. But if if council were looking for revenues, uh, and in fact, when I thought that we were going to be, uh, when we were going down the, uh, doing the budget work, one of the recommendations that I was going to come forward with was to raise that fee. It was discussed once before. Uh, council made the decision not to do it at that time, but um, if we do not act within the 64 days required by the um, by the Secretary of State, then it goes to 2 percent. It just opts to what the state uh, the state opt is, which is 2 percent. Uh, 3 percent is what we are charging Comcast, and we're probably the only local government uh, in the area um, at 3 percent um, with Comcast now. Um, and so I, I felt, because this was a new service to the island, that 5% uh, that was what I put in there. Um, and uh, rather than needing to revisit it periodically, looking for that maximum, it just seemed the wise thing to do to go ahead and have that in there now. That way you're never going up on anybody. If, they're, they're, if they opt for the service, <laughs> going up on that. <laughs> you know, rather, you know, you're just opting, opting for the maximum amount now. And, and you all have heard the presentation, and the theory is that you know they're they're getting the money anyway. So okay, well, um, you know I, I as you, you, you all may remember I really wanted to keep the Comcast at three percent. I thought that was a tax increase for our citizens, and I look at this the same. And uh, um, I'd like to amend the uh, motion and uh, and cap the rate at three percent. Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Well, <clears throat> yeah. One thing I'd like to point out is this is a brand new service. Yeah. It does not exist. Sure. Nobody's bought it. Nobody's paid for it. It is a choice by individuals. Uh, therefore, it's not a tax increase. It is what what's a fee. And you know, the other thing is we don't know how they're pricing that model. Yeah. It costs you, uh, let's say, a hundred bucks for a Comcast TV right now, and you get three percent of that. 
they come in at 75 for their IPT, uh, IPTV service, and we're doing it at 3%. We're losing, <clears throat> we're losing revenue from somebody that's switched from Comcast by not having that 5%. We don't know what their, their pricing strategy is from that perspective. It's going to be competitive, and it's going to be low to, to draw customers over. Uh, so I think that I can't, I can't support reducing it to, to 3%. Mr. Mayor. So, at at the same time, I, I thought I heard the city administrator say that we could increase Comcast rate from 3 to 5 percent should we determine that we need the revenue and want to do that. Do we have the same leeway with, with this agreement? I believe it's annually that we could, we could make that decision, but I would need to confirm that with the uh, legal aspects of things, which I would have done had we needed to, I knew that we needed to raise it. I knew that that didn't seem to be what council wished to do a year ago when we dealt with the uh, Comcast, because it was, well, a little more than a year ago, I guess now. And so um, I didn't expect that it would, that it would work this time either, uh, unless we were pretty desperate for the money to avoid the tax increase, property tax increase. Okay. The same comments I made when it came up with Comcast, I think the enlightened mayor and I were the only ones to vote for the five percent, but right. this is a competitive this is a competitive industry and they build into their price the total amount someone's gonna pay, and built into that amount is a five percent tax. So if we only take three percent, that leaves two percent on the table. These providers can give it back to the customer or they can keep it. And if anyone in here thinks they're giving it back to the customer, you're nuts. They're keeping it. So who do you want to get that 2%? Do you want Comcast or, 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 or Bell South to get it, or do you want the city to get it? And I think the city just needs to get it. This is, this is a, a, if you will, a voluntary type tax as opposed to a property tax increase where everyone has to pay. And so I'm, I'm actually in favor of, of putting this at 5%. It is not a tax increase. Okay. Any other discussion? We have before us an amendment to move it from Is five. The amendment seconded? Yeah, the yeah. amendment was seconded yeah. by Sandy, okay. I believe. Mm -hmm. Correct? Just yes. Okay. We have an amendment uh, before us to move from 5% to 3%. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. No. Please say no. Please say no. Excuse me. No. Arms up for no, please. No. No. Say aye. No. No. Okay. Amendment So we have before us ordinance 2011-6, first reading. All in favor of first reading as as submitted, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you opposed? No. <laughs> okay. Motion carries. I'm going to assume it unanimously. You went through that. Um, yes, thank you. No other comments on that. We'll take that to second reading. Thank you very much. Um, under miscellaneous business, my only notation is everybody should either have received it or going to when you get your mail that on May 3rd is our deadline for letting the municipal association. Uh, work through the uh, the booking if you want to attend the annual meeting for the municipal associations uh, this will be in Hilton Head in June 18th 19th, 16th to 19th something like that you go for a minimum of two nights if you book through the uh, association and you have to let Marie know if you're uh, interested in going so. okay any other yes. comments Marty I know right thank you mr. mayor um, uh, on behalf of Carta, I'd like to, uh, you've probably seen the announcements in the papers and all that they've changed some of the Mount Pleasant routes. In fact, one of the Mount Pleasant routes now goes <laughs> out as far as Wando High School. Uh, what that has done, what that means for Isle Palm from Solomon's Island, uh, as you know, we're served by what we call FlexServe. So it's a call on demand service, it's free call 24 hours in advance. Due to the rerouting of the buses in Mount Pleasant, it has freed up a good piece of that area that the FlexServe bus serves. 
which now includes mainly Sullivan's Island, Isle of Palms. So it's going to be easier to use that service. In addition, there's a bus stop near the gate to the county park and I've left some schedules back there. There are actual times that you should be able to count on that small bus being there to pick you up. It'll drop you off in town center. If you get the other schedules, you can make it to downtown West Ashley, North Charleston. So it's a, a service we, we need. More importantly, May 7th is CART is going to be promoting CART at the beach. Not, not a big promotion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as such, um, at 11.30, the bus will be stopping at the front beach uh, near the ice cream stand right there. And there'll be some picture opportunities for whoever would like to be there. Uh, I'll get some scheduling information and email information out to, to the rest of the council. But uh, the FlexServe, we, we said, mo more importantly, we saved the FlexServe. This is the most underperforming route that CARTA has, this and, and one of the ones in Mount Pleasant. We have done changes to hopefully increase the service and make it easier to use. The focus of CARTA to the beach is to have people park in Mount Pleasant and take CARTA to the beach. And not have as, to park as, the cars Instead of bringing their own car and, and paying for parking. So and another and, solution oh. to parking problem. So the, the key is to make them aware of Mount Pleasant that right. the CARTA can bring them to our wonderful beach. So. Ralph. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I just want to thank Councilman Batelli for all his work on this committee. You talk about real drudge grunt work figuring out <laughs> bus routes. <laughs> and I know he's put a lot of time in these meetings and, and um, keeping an eye out for the city as he does this. We, we all, I think we all appreciate that. Well, uh, thank you. Ralph, I think everybody here recognizes that. <laughs> and, and hopefully Marty will stay on that committee next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out soon here. <laughs> it's not quite a labor of love, but it, it has to be pretty close. Maybe go get him a little outfit to wear. Uh, <laughs> any other uh, items to be brought forward? None heard. I'll entertain a motion. We have no need for an executive session, do we? Okay. Uh, motion. I'd like to uh, move that we adjourn, Mr. Mayor. Motion to adjourn. Seconded? Yep. Seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are out of here. Thank you all for coming.